In this video I'm going to show you how to take a random sample from a large data set. So I'm using the cars data set again which may be familiar from other videos and I'm using Excel to do this which is a good program to handle large data sets. It copes well with the large volume of data and it doesn't crash like some programs do. Um, first thing to point out though is that we do have a lot of data you can see it, this, the, the row numbers start at 1 here, and if I hold down the uh, down arrow, you can see this goes on for a long time. If I hold down Control and press down, it jumps to the end of this list, and it's jumped all the way to almost 4,500. Um, so there's a lot of data here, and it's quite common that you don't want to use all data. In many situations, you can't access all the data, so you have to deal with a sample, and there has to be some care given to the, uh, the process of getting that sample. To simulate getting a sample from this large data set, we need to choose some of these rows in the data at random. And then we could argue that we have chosen a random sample from the data set. And so we need to discuss a few ways to do that. I'm going to show you one simple way to do that quickly uh, using some random numbers. In order to do this first, though, it's useful to have a unique identifying number for each row. So I'm going to add a column at the beginning of this data by right-clicking on the first column and clicking Insert. And because I selected a column, it thinks, ah, oh, he wants to insert a new column, which it has done. I'm actually going to insert another one um, for reasons which will become clear in a moment. In this column that I first created, though, I'm going to create um, an ID number. It just could, it could just be a number, but I'm just basically going to number this list, starting with 1 and then 2. I could use a formula to say, do the previous cell plus 1, but Excel is pretty confident that it knows what I'm doing here, and if I double-click those first two, or just copy it down, it will run all the way down this list, numbering these rows. Um, just to check, it goes to the end. I can jump to the end, and it has numbered them. There are actually 4,449. Watch out for the miscount in the number of rows. That's because the first row is a descriptor row. So now we've got some unique way of identifying each row with a number. I'm going to create a second column here with a random number in it, um, if I spell random correctly. Um, and there is a random number function on Excel, which is going to be useful for us. By the way, to make sure you can see everything in a column, you could just double-click the side of it here, and it uh, resizes it so you can see what's written in it. That's very useful. So I'm going to use a formula for this random number. Press equals to get a formula, and I'm going to start typing the word random. But before I finish, it suggested a few things. I'm going to talk about the first one in this video, the rand command. If I press tab, it knows that that's what I want. Um, but notice this rand command. All commands in Excel have brackets to indicate what, what you need to tell it to do. Uh, but this one doesn't need any input, so you just got to close the bracket immediately, which is a bit strange, but that's quite a common function uh, feature for random number generators in software. And when I press return, you can see it has generated a random number, and this is always going to be between 0 and 1. It's given it to an insane level of precision as well, which is not really what I need or care about, but it's done it. And if I copy this down, I could drag it in the normal way, or I could double-click the last one here. And as long as there's data next to it, that copies it all the way down to the end of the data, as you can see. And so now each row has a random number assigned to it, which is quite useful. There is a problem, though, because this random number is calculated and recalculated any time anything significant changes in the spreadsheet. And to force Excel to do a recalculation, you can see if it's doing it by pressing the F9 key. And I've just pressed F9, and you can see all those numbers changed. And if I keep pressing F9, which is a recalculate button, you can see these random numbers are changing every time. And actually, although I'm glad it's doing random stuff, and that's what I wanted, I, I want it to stop changing these all the time. So there's an important feature to turn these random numbers into... Uh, sort of fixed random numbers that aren't going to change again. And that's because at the moment they are a formula saying, give me a random number. So actually what I want is not the formula there anymore, I just want the number it has generated. And there is an easy way to do that, which is to copy this column. I used Control-C to do that. And then immediately paste it again on top. But this time, instead of pasting as normal, which you could use Control-V or this menu I'm pointing at, there's a special paste called Paste Values. And that removes any formulae and just create, just pastes in the result of the formula, which is what I want. I just want the numbers. So if I do click that, uh, it looks like nothing has happened. But if I now press F9, which I'm doing repeatedly, nothing is changing because clicking on these cells tells me that there is no formula there anymore. It's just the random number generated, which means it's not going to change anymore. Great. And now it's not going to change. I can what? I can sort this entire data field, all 4,400 odd of them, I can sort them in order of this random number. And it will put a random lot at the top, because the lowest number in here is pretty random choice, and it's going to put the lowest ones at the top. So I'm going to select all the data. You can do that whatever means you like. There's a little, uh, this top left uh, button, instead of just selecting a column there, or a row here, you can click in the top left, and it selects all the data. I'm going to go over on the Home tab to the Sort and Filter option and click on Sort, Smallest to Largest. Uh, since I'm looking at the first column, 
uh, it has sorted these smallest to largest. So the first number in there here is, is so small it's gone into exponential form. But you can see these numbers are small, 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 getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's sorted them in order of the random number, but since it's a random number, these cars I'm getting are in a random order. And if I wanted, say, a sample of 50, I could just select the first 50 rows. I could go down to 51, which means I've got 50 rows of data. I could copy that. I could make a new sheet or a new spreadsheet, and I could paste it in there. And there we have just 50 cars chosen at random using a random number generated method to do that. There are other ways to do this, some of which may be easier, but this is at least a quick and easy way to try.